favorite time of year and my perfect happiness is the beginning of the year with the influx of the new class. It brings in a new energy and every cohort's very different. Like just if I could have a day and I could just spend a day on one object and tell every single story that that object presents, it's, it's sort of a gift. It's wonderful. Oh, coming in uh, and seeing that the little red light on my phone is not blinking wildly. Uh, so either it's burned out or no one has any complaints. The depth of misery at work is when everybody calls in sick. <laughs> um, losing an unsaved draft of an email is the worst. <laughs> My favorite place on campus is um, the tiny little chapel upstairs in Divinity Hall. I would say the lab because all the toys are there and that's where things get done. I like to walk, just walk down to the river uh, sometimes just to kind of clear your head. The art museum. I absolutely love the Harvard Art Museum. Yeah, so it's a bit of a secret though. I promise you won't share it. And I don't even know that it's technically Harvard space, but the eighth floor of Landmark is like the best kept secret. Yeah, there are swings there. Swings. I would say watching people that have reported to me develop and makes me proud to think maybe I had a little something to do with that. Getting help and supports and coordinating for students who really are feeling very fragile or are really, really challenged by really difficult stuff. And seeing them graduate and seeing them go out into the world and become change makers um, and seeing them thrive. And I get to do that. It's, it's really wonderful. So my most treasured Harvard possession is my tiara. <laughs> my most treasured possession has to be the 30 times magnifier. Um, I use it to look very closely at objects from the Harvard Library and hopefully see what secrets they can reveal. My most prized possession at work would definitely be my post-it note colored sticky tabs because this is how I manage my calendar when we have multiple print production pieces on schedule. Holly, I like to see in a coworker definitely is um, someone that is always willing to learn. Adaptability. Um, I think it's great when you work with someone who um, is willing to change. Humor, most important. I think people who are super collaborative is important. So one of my biggest pet peeves is when um, people stop by my office to tell me they just sit in the email. That drives me nuts. Maybe uh, heating up fish in the microwave. That would have to be obsessive bagpipe playing in the break room. You have someone who plays bagpipe? Not anymore. <laughs> my favorite acronym at Harvard is FIELD, which stands for Field Immersion Experiences for Leadership Development. Only at Harvard could you have an acronym FIELD where you actually have FIELD again in the actual definition of the acronym. I, I like the concept of Harvard time where you can be late to everything. Robust. I'm so sick of robust and not robust. Ping. Yes, lots of pinging going on. Too much pinging at Harvard. The acronyms at Harvard, it's, uh, I don't have a military career, but it does feel like it to a certain extent. Um, with everything being referred to by acronym, uh, it takes a while to start figuring out what they're actually referring to. Best career advice I got at Harvard was find your replacement and know who you're going to work for. Some really good career advice I've received is to be inspired by those around me. If you don't love what you do, it's a sort of a slow march to the grave. So, uh, you know, make sure you love your work, and I do love my work. I'd suggest they talk to different people at different schools, different departments, um, and find out what everyone does. And don't be afraid, don't be afraid to be ambitious. Don't waste your energy on the past. It's nice to know what you can do to improve, but it's always best to think about what you can contribute moving forward.
My motto is, leave the place better than you found it. It's probably just have a good time, laugh. It's, life's not that serious. <laughs> um, it's always better to underpromise and overdeliver. I definitely live by that one and um, ask that of all of my team members. My Harvard hero, I think I have a lot of them actually because I've been at Harvard a long time. I was 16 and a half and my uncle was a Harvard police officer and he brought me over to the dining halls at, uh, in the business school, Presky Dining Hall, and he's the one who got me uh, into dining service and started my career at Harvard. My Harvard hero is Drew Faust. Not only is she an extraordinary historian, an able administrator, but also the first female president of Harvard. Um, she is definitely one of my heroes, and I'm a little embarrassed because she's probably listening to this right now. Well, the afternoon that I found out from my boss, uh, she pulled me in for a meeting and our dean of finance and our head of HR were there, so I thought something had gone wrong uh, and I, my heart was already racing and then when she surprised me with the wonderful news, I just burst, it, I started crying and smiling because I just couldn't believe it. It was just such an exciting moment. I feel incredibly proud to be named a Harvard hero and to be named by my colleagues is just the best. Oh, I feel great. Uh, this is a good opportunity you have uh, to get the uh, evil. It's not easy. Well, it's a little bit embarrassing. I'm not uh, the type of person who likes to be in the spotlight, but I also feel really grateful to my colleagues that nominated me. And feels feels pretty cool. Uh, like I should get a you know maybe a, a you know Harvard cape or something. <laughs> uh, shocked, embarrassed, but. Quite humbled by it. But I was really overwhelmed when I read the nominations from so many people with my work. And um, it's uh, it's a real honor that uh, to win the award and um, you know have the support of the school that I really really enjoy working at.